Sometimes it's not all about the PlayStation 5, especially because a lot of people still can't get their hands on them. Thanks a lot, scalpers. Anyway, there's still plenty of stuff to look forward to on the PlayStation 4 this year. We got a big list here. Now, just please note, many games are canceled or very rapidly being delayed this year, so we'll try to update this in the comments, but at the time of making this video, this is the information. Starting off with number 20, Biomutant. Yes, the game that we've been talking about seemingly for years after tons of delays, finally, seemingly, has a solid lockdown release date. It is a multi-platform game, but it is releasing for PlayStation 4, and we've had our eye on it for a really long time just because of how creative and different it seems to be. Yes, it's very much an action RPG, but you create your own little critter, there's some open world shenanigans, a comic booky style, and we're just excited to see what comes of this. It's been in the works for so long, it seems cool, and hopefully we're finally getting our hands on it for real May 25th of this year. Next over at number 19, we have Little Devil Inside. Most recently, this was shown off at a PlayStation 5 announcement showcase, but this game has been in development for a very long time time and it is slated to also release on PlayStation 4. So thankfully, you're not missing out because this game looks really cool. From the art style to the action adventure vibe, this seems like more of an indie experience a lot of people should not miss out on. It's got a lot of personality. It seems like kind of funny, but also grim and dark and a little bit spooky. I don't really know what to think about this one, but I know I'm going to check it out. Next over at number 18, we have Mass Effect, the Legendary Edition. This is the collection of the excellent sci-fi RPG trilogy. One of the best. It's getting updated with higher frame rates, prettier graphics, all the DLC, and some nice new touches to Mass Effect 1 in particular, which has kind of aged the worst, but I think people give it a little bit too much smack. I think Mass Effect 1 was really good. Anyway, you're going to be able to replay these games in all their glory and then some when this releases May 14th, 2021. Next over at number 17, it is worth pointing out on this list, uh, Battlefield and Call of Duty games are re most likely releasing this year and you're probably going to be able to play them on your PlayStation 4 or PlayStation 4 Pro. At the time of making this video, we don't know anything about them, but for the sake of trying to make this list as complete as possible, especially considering things change so much, we wanted to just throw this in here as a placeholder. So consider this number 17, the yearly first person shooter point. Next over at number 16, we have Evil West, a really weird, cool looking game that I can't get enough of. The cinematic reveal trailer gave us a vibe from the early 2000s that we never thought we'd miss, but it turns out we do. Over the top grim dark action as like a sci-fi cowboy fighting evil things. The game has built as kind of you becoming a country western sci-fi superhero and that's all I really needed to hear. It is being published by Focus Home Interactive who do tend to put out kind of weird unconventional games. Maybe not always perfect games, but interesting games. And we'll know for sure with Evil West because it is slated to release in 2021. Next, at number 15, we have Chorus. Or, I mean, if, if you read the, the box, it says Corvus with like a V, but it's actually technically called Chorus. This is an exciting space combat shooter with pretty interesting lore and a story behind it. In it, you're the former right hand of the head of like the most powerful cult in the universe, and your best friend is a sentient spaceship. So together, you go on an epic space adventure for redemption of your past sins. And uh, yeah, that sounds really cool. Good sci-fi stuff, and especially a good backing story for a primarily ship combat game. It looks like it definitely promises a lot of fast paced combat with a good balance between uh, battles in big open areas and then just more tight, intense, enclosed spaces. Last year when we first saw like the debut trailer of this, we were pretty blown away, especially considering what is essentially when you boil it down a simple premise, there's a lot going on here, especially in terms of style, presentation, atmosphere, music, all that. I think Chorus is really promising, especially for people who are in love with sci-fi. Next at number 14, we have Fist, or F-I-S-T, Forged in Shadow Torch. This game is actually part of the China Hero Project. This is a PlayStation initiative to support smaller Chinese game developers to launch their games on a global scale. Fist is technically kind of like a 2D Metroidvania game that has a bunch of a focus on action. Now, according to the developers, the game offers a pretty wide range of options in combat with a lot of different weapons that you can mix and match and experiment with. Now, you can play offensive in a high risk, high reward manner, or in a more methodical and slow paced way. Oh, and from what we can tell, the platforming looks pretty precise in sections with a lot of enemies and projectiles and traps flying all over the place. It looks like a busy game and probably an intensely challenging one, but hopefully also a fun one. It seems like we're definitely gonna see this one this year, and so far it looks pretty promising. 
But moving on over to number 13, we have Boundary. This is actually another game, part of the Sony's China Hero project. This is a bit more of a unique looking tactical shooter that of course takes place in space. In this, you're floating all around a space station that seems to have destructible environments, hunting down an enemy team while dealing with zero gravity. You're grappling from place to place. And the fact that there's like no up, no down, no specific directions, this seems really cool and creative and very cool in videos, but it also looks like it might be quite the trip to play. And you're really gonna have to get your head wrapped around this concept. Still, this way of moving, this way of combat is very unique. We've seen it and experimented with, with VR games in the past. And this has the potential to get pretty competitive, but unique at the same time. The game's gonna offer different characters divided by classes, but apparently there's gonna be a bunch of customization that can go beyond cosmetic stuff to kind of cater your character to your own playstyle. Honestly, these concepts are very ambitious, but we're hoping they can pull it off. We're also gonna see this on PC, but Boundary is slated for some time in 2021. Down to number 12, we have a game that released very early in 2021, and that is Hitman 3. For the World of Assassination trilogy, essentially this new version of the Hitman games, this emphasis on endlessly replayable levels and variety, Hitman 3 kind of ties it all together. These levels are the most interesting, the objectives are the most fascinating, the moments the most memorable, and thankfully this time around they finally injected a good bit of story into some of the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay that just makes it all the more compelling. I was very skeptical. I, I appreciated what they did with the first two Hitman World of Assassination games. I liked them, I understood it, but the third one hammered it home and got me truly hooked. It also looks pretty damn good, even if you're running it on a base PS4. These games have been impressive from all fronts. And especially, I gotta say, if like you're an old school Hitman fan and you've been skeptical of these games, this one is at least worth a try for, at the very least, some good, memorable Hitman, Agent 47, and Diana moments. But next, at number 11, we have Back for Blood. This is gonna be a multi-platform release, but Turtle Rock is at it again. Of course, the studio formed by a lot of the folks who brought us Left for Dead back in the day. This is essentially them coming back and doing that. Yes, they had some missteps, at least probably more from the publisher side with Evolve, but Back for Blood, from what we've seen so far, looks awesome. And early reactions of people who have been able to jump in and some pre-release stuff have had nothing but cool things to say about it. There's the emphasis on the co-op, running around, shooting zombies with your friends, but with some really cool weapons, some exciting explosions, gore, destruction. It seems like Left 4 Dead, but with the action and atmosphere just amped up to 11. And to be completely frank, we are 100% in for that. There are a lot of games since Left 4 Dead that have really come out and done this type of thing, but boiling it back down to that core emphasis on you and your friends shooting zombies and zombie-like creatures from some of the people who pioneered it back in the day, that's what we're looking forward to the most here with Back for Blood. But next at number 10, we have Gotham Knights. This is a really interesting title specifically because it's a Batman game and it doesn't take place in the Arkham universe. No, this is Ubisoft Montreal's new joint, which is a new world essentially where Batman and Commissioner Gordon are dead and it's up to the Bat family to save the day and keep Gotham free from crime. Now, initially there was a lot of hubbub about this being a complete games as a service game, but it seems like that's not going to be the case. Of course, we're gonna judge it when we get our hands on it, but from what we've seen, it does look like you can go in single player or fun co-op and engage in more open world style Batman Arkham combat, traversal, mission design, but just on a newer scale and with an emphasis on loot, leveling up, and customizing your characters. Not to mention, we think the biggest potential here is just more mainstream Batman fans getting exposed to interesting Bat family stories. They can do a lot here with this creative, colorful cast of characters, not to mention the Court of Owls. If they go their own route with that, we could see even more cool shit. We're really hoping this one is good and doesn't get bogged down by a bunch of microtransactions, fingers crossed, but as of right now, Gotham Knights is still slated for 2021. Next at number nine, we have It Takes Two. This is from developer Hazelight, the people previously behind A Way Out. Remember that game where you escaped jail as two convicts and one person on the couch played one character and the game did creative things, splitting the screen and giving you different gameplay scenarios? Well, they're essentially doing that again, but on a bigger scale with a new concept, kind of like a romantic comedy 
goofy, lighthearted atmosphere where a couple on the rocks is transformed into dolls, and they are little figures in this massive world, and you pretty much go through a linear adventure of wackiness and zaniness. The trailers have been awesome. The potential is massive. The way they make these games and kind of pace them to always throw new, interesting gameplay elements at you keeps it refreshing, and we're so excited to get our hands on this. We actually, we've been calling it, I've said this in a couple of videos, but I think this game is going to be massively underrated, just like A Way Out was. It Takes Two is releasing March 26th, 2021 for all the platforms. Next at number eight, we have Kina, Bridge of Spirits. This is an indie style game with an incredibly cool art style, evocative of something from like Disney Animation Studios or Pixar or DreamWorks, whatever, but it's its own thing and it seems cool. It's like an action adventure game with light RPG elements and you collect these little creatures and the game has said to have some environmental manipulation as well. It seems like a lot of people have been anticipating this game, especially people who are just fans of this art style of this genre of game. So we're curious to see what they can do with it. It's releasing on PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5, and we just hope to see the potential realized. Next at number seven, we have Riders Republic, a game which I think we're gonna see this year. If you don't remember this game, I don't blame you. You know, in fact, the reason we do remember it is because it's that Ubisoft game that we keep forgetting about. Jokes aside though, this game actually reminds us of Steep. You know, it's like an extreme sports game on a mountainside, but with more variety and weather and different action adventure sports and a lot more going on than just winter sports and snow. It also seems to try and have a little bit more of a silly, cool, kind of rad attitude. I'm out of touch. I don't know what they're going for here with this vibe. Still, it looks like it uses like the big open world formula with a lot of events and stuff to do that Ubisoft is known for, but with a games as a service type feeling that may make it either feel fresh or make it be reviled and hated by everybody. We are skeptical, especially because it is like a full-priced games as a service game, but if that gameplay elements are fun, especially some of the bike stuff we've seen teased, downhill jam style games can be pretty cool. There is some potential, so we're keeping an eye on it at least. Next at number six, we have Lego Star Wars, the Skywalker Saga. This one, don't let this slip under the radar. We've actually noticed a lot of people in comments really anticipating this one, especially just because with what they have said and shown about this game does seem pretty cool. A revival of the beloved Lego Star Wars games, but in a big package, essentially covering all the movies, all the lore, all the big moments in a new style, incredibly even more realistic looking graphics. And by realistic, I mean, it looks like they're real Lego bricks. Obviously it's not realistic, but you know what I mean. But the Lego Star Wars brand has been strong for a while. It can be pretty hilarious. And there's a lot of potential here for them to introduce cool new concepts into the gameplay department, whether they're going to capture a young audience again, or kind of cater to the people who grew up playing it that are now a little bit older and can handle a little bit more. Whatever they do with this really, we're willing to give it a shot thanks to so many memories of long nights being spent playing all those awesome Lego Star Wars games. You know what I mean? This is a multi-platform game and it has been delayed but we're expected to see it in the first or second quarter of 2021. Next at number five, we have Where the Heart Leads, which is previously known as Where the Heart Is, and it's a narrative adventure game. The game promises to have real consequences for your choices in a world where our world crosses paths with the ethereal world, resulting in, honestly, some pretty beautiful set pieces that you engage in. And with everything they have going on here, it seems like it has the potential for a very personal and emotional journey during this game. We don't expect it to be too long, but it does look compelling, and especially that art style, Man, I can't get enough of that. I can't wait to see this in action. This one won't have a PlayStation 5 version. It's going to be playable as backwards compatible title, but it will be on PlayStation 4 and it's launching second quarter of 2021. Now down to number four, of course, we have Resident Evil Village. A lot of people have been caught up talking about playing this on next generation consoles and PC, but don't forget, you're still gonna be able to play this on PS4, and thank goodness for that, because this one looks awesome. It's following up the tale of Ethan Winters, established in Resident Evil 7. Once again, you have that kick-ass Resident Evil graphics engine. So the game's still gonna look really good on PlayStation 4, and they're doing some interesting things here with obviously the village concept, the haunted castle concept, even down to like the vendor and the inventory management stuff, very evocative of Resident Evil 4, but this time around with cool werewolves and hot vampire ladies. If that's not a good enough pitch, I don't know what is. I, I mean, I guess I have one more pitch, the fact that Chris Redfield is fully featured in the game, seemingly as the cool Chris we remember, but this time he's up to no good. What's the deal? There's definitely a mystery afoot and I can't wait to see where it goes. Thankfully, the wait isn't too much longer because it's releasing May 7th, 2021. 
Down to number three, we have Far Cry 6, another game that has been delayed quite a bit, but we're thinking maybe we'll see it this year, maybe at the holiday season. We hope so. This new Far Cry game takes place on a fictional Caribbean island of Yara, and it's gonna star Gustavo Fring himself, Moff Gideon himself, AKA Giancarlo Esposito. Someone who is just really good at playing villains. He's gonna be the prolific villain this time around, and he is a dictator, and you are working to essentially overthrow the current peoples in power in a revolutionary guerrilla style gameplay. I'm curious to see how much that actually translates over to Far Cry 6's gameplay. Are they gonna really change it up this time around? Or is it gonna be business as usual? Who knows? Regardless, the world's apparently gonna be really big. It's also going to have one of the biggest city areas in a Far Cry game, unlike anything we've really seen before. An emphasis on weapon crafting and modification, and the potential is high. We're keeping an eye on this one. It could go one of two ways, and these games are very divisive. It could be another Ubisoft cluttered game that people get tired of, or it could be a kick-ass new Far Cry game. Who knows, really, but hopefully we see it soon. Now down to number two, we have Dying Light 2. This is another game that has been delayed quite a bit, but was slated for PlayStation 4 and the other major consoles, and it's been a little radio silent lately, but we're thinking 2021 is hopefully when we see it. It takes the awesome, incredibly underrated framework of the original Dying Light game, gives it a little bit more of a post-apocalyptic flair and an emphasis on storytelling and your decisions actually mattering and changing the world around you. We'd really love to see Techland capitalize on the awesomeness that was the original Dying Light, which a game that has been supported incredibly well. Dying Light 2 has reportedly had some development issues recently, but we're hoping to see it in 2021. Now, down to number one, of course, the big one, the PlayStation exclusive of the year, considering other things are releasing for PlayStation 5 or they've been delayed. It's Horizon Forbidden West, which is releasing for PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5. You are once again Aloy in a big and exciting new world, presumably embarking on new adventures. Now, at the time of making this video, we don't know too much about this game other than that really pretty reveal trailer. We know it's probably gonna still look and run and play really well on PlayStation 4, and we're just excited to see how they can expand upon the concepts of the robot monster hunting stuff from the original game, and where the heck the story's gonna go. There's a lot of questions, but we're happy to see this thing on PlayStation 4. Those are the games, but also uh, in the bonus section, we wanna mention one other game, God of War Ragnarok. Now, a lot of people are thinking this is going to come this year. Now, as the year develops, we don't know for sure, but we wanted to mention it also with the fact that there have been rumors circulating around out there with one of the former God of War creators saying that this game will release on PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5. Who knows, it's still up in the air, but we did want to at least give it a mention. Those are some PlayStation 4 games to look forward to throughout 2021. Again, this list is probably going to be an ongoing updated thing, so be sure to keep your eyes peeled. But hey, if you enjoyed this video and maybe we directed you towards a new game maybe you've never heard of, clicking the like button does help us out. We would really appreciate that. And if you're new, consider subscribing, maybe hit that notification bell, because we put out videos every single day. But as always, though, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.